up from my window. Good morning, landing crew. We are going to Lonnie's first day of pulmonary rehab after transplant. So we're running really behind. It's just so early. It's Monday. It's early. You don't have to wake up yet. We are done, or Lonnie's done. We're gonna get Starbucks because he wants it so badly. <laughs> No, I keep talking about Starbucks over and over. But he did really, really well. His oxygen only dropped to 92% when he was doing activity with the six minute walk. So he's doing pulmonary rehab, physical therapy, and occupational therapy. And basically the first five to six months after a transplant, it's just really important to try to get the most out of the lungs and try to basically expand them the most you can because there comes a point where, you know, you're not gonna keep being able to push and push them kind of thing. We can spend all day in bed. I'll put the TV in the room. We'll have a Netflix marathon, KG saxophone. We'll order in a bunch of food. I'll put your favorite music on all the way baritone. Oh, yeah. Shut the lights, go in front. finally decided that it's time to have summer start. <sighs> so I'm going to therapy. Day's been a crazy day. See how it goes. You know, a lot of people have asked me like how I am doing. Overall, I'm doing good. Obviously, so happy that we're on the other side of Lonnie's transplant. But at the same time, it's been a lot and there's a lot that I have to unpack and you have to unpack it slowly for obvious reasons. You can't just deal with this level of trauma for a prolonged period like this and it be over within a few days. It's just a lot processing everything, trying to find myself again because for the past seven months, I've been Lonnie's caregiver and yes, I have four disabled children and because of that, I do always have to be a caregiver in some capacity, but Lonnie's capacity was way more intense and 24 seven, literally. Trying to find that again is really hard. Lonnie Jr. got sick right after I left his dad and so I was also like reestablishing myself. We were trying to figure things out between us. Now I'm like trying to figure it all out. I think I'm gonna get my nails done this week because I haven't got them done in a while. And that's that's like a Stephanie thing to do is I love getting my nails done, keeping them done. <sighs> I feel like being up so early this morning is really catching up to me. You want me to fix the back of your costume? Yeah. All right, Superman. Do you want to cook with mommy, yes or no? No, I mean, yeah. So Penelope has echolalia, where she repeats everything we say. Not everything, but she repeats it. And so sometimes it's hard to know what she really wants but she understands what yes or no means. We just ask her and that's how we know. Is mommy awesome, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> of course. You love mommy, yes or no? No. <laughs> no kisses. No. Kiss? No. <laughs> Nelly, do you love mommy, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> I'm actually glad. All right, so it's getting late, so there may be some fussing because it's getting closer to bedtime, which is always kind of crazy. But I'm gonna be making some sausage Alfredo. My best friend Melissa, when she was here last summer, she made it super Mom, quick and easy. Yes, I can fix it. What's wrong, Nelly Bug? I have muscles. Superman. <laughs> Hi, our landing crew, and I'm dressing up. Superman. A few moments later. All right, so we are not having sausage Alfredo. One of the sausages went bad. And the other pound that I just bought at the grocery store, if you watch the grocery haul, well, I put it in the freezer. The kids are all struggling extra, all of them. I, you're hurting your sister's ears. Keep her alone, please. 
Then the camera keeps messing up on footage. Yeah, I mean, I've had this camera since 2018, so I like shouldn't be surprised, but <sighs> we're still going with our spaghetti theme, but we're gonna have meatballs, spaghetti sauce, and <laughs> garlic knots instead. That's the plan. Oh, look, it's in the wind. Your Kate's in the wind. <laughs> he just has so much energy today. <laughs> and so he's like, I want to go outside so I can fly like Superman. I was like, that's a great idea while I cook dinner. <laughs> Guess what kind of tree this is, Lex? An apple tree. Dad found it. And it's starting to bear fruit a little bit. That's so cool. Don't have to do one single thing. You don't know how much I want you. Just looking at you makes my whole world. Spin. So we got the litter robot just to make the litter situation with Lonnie a little bit easier. And we got the extra stuff. So I'm super excited to put it together. And by we, I mean Lonnie. But that's probably not going to be on today's vlog. However, that's not what I'm showing you guys. We got a Hillrom box because Hillrom is the company that did Lonnie's shaker vest before transplant. He was having to do the shaker vest every four hours. You've never seen it. It's just like a vest that connects to a machine and it shakes and it helps anyone that has like scar tissue. It's most commonly used with cystic fibrosis patients, but for Lonnie, he had really bad scarring of its airway bronchiectasis and so it helped a lot but anyway since he has new lungs he doesn't need it anymore we get to ship it back to them super exciting we actually already got to get back the bipap machines and then we're giving back the pulse ox because we have one that works just fine we're holding on to his oxygen for a few more weeks just to make sure that you know i don't know we're just, it's it i think it's all of our security blankets at this point but at some point we are gonna have to get back the oxygen i actually made this vlog to talk to you guys about what happened with liam and his elbow and all those good things but i haven't got around to that so we'll get to it many hours later all right guys so i get asked a lot what happened to liam's elbow liam is my five-year-old he's autistic he's non-speaking and his elbow got broke. And so a lot of people like want to know what happened. Essentially, Liam and all my four youngest kids, because they're, they're all autistic, they're in ABA therapy, which is a form of behavioral therapy. But because of how controversial it is, my three youngest kids always had it in home where we could monitor it. There's cameras everywhere. And then my 15 year old goes to center where Monday through Friday he goes. It's, it's kind of like a school where they work on like certain like skill sets and things like that. My three youngest were in home. We were already kind of feeling a little bit iffy and kind of wondering if we were going to go with a different company because we've just had such a high turnover rate with our RBTs. And it seems like once one of the kids would get used to an RBT, they would leave or something would happen. So we were just kind of unsure about it, mainly because they're there to help support and model the AAC device. Like that's the huge thing I want for Liam is I want him to be able to communicate with us with the AAC device. When you don't have consistent staff, that makes it really hard because they have to start the whole process over again every time. So anyway, Lex and Liam, they love each other, but they really can't be left alone together. Both of them have ABA programs in place to work on this part of them. One day I went down there, Liam and Lex were chilling. The therapists were in the living room, all was good. We heard Liam screaming. We run down there to see what happened because we heard it from outside. Like my window over here was open and I heard it. I go downstairs and we're trying to figure out what happened. And none of the therapists, the adults can tell us what happened. We eventually get a story from Lex, my seven year old of roughly about what happened. We have an outside camera, but literally days before, apparently the rain had like shorted a circuit. So I couldn't even see what happened with the camera. From what I'm understanding is they were playing Batman. They were being too rough with each other. Liam fell, tried to brace himself. And because he like braced himself straight like this, it put a lot of pressure on his, his bone and it like fractured his elbow bone. Thankfully he didn't need surgery. But while I was in the ER, I was trying to figure out like how this happened. Like how does this happen with two adults there? You know, basically the kids were unsupervised. No one was out there. No one was checking on them and they were just 
having the best time of their life. Now, if you're not a special needs parent, you're probably like two brothers playing in the backyard. What's the big deal? You know, they're five and seven. But with autism, it can be really hard to know how to socialize appropriately. For the most part, that's not a big deal, but sometimes that can mean like a child being too rough or a child not knowing the cues when the other child doesn't wanna play or kind of knowing when to take a step back. For them, it was an issue and something that shouldn't have happened. I understand things happen. The RBT felt horrible, like absolutely horrible. She loved Liam so, 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 so much. But at that point in time, I just decided that I was done, that I was just like, we're just going to maybe try a different company that we haven't had so many inconsistencies with and things like that. I had planned on enrolling them into an ABA center, kind of like Noah's in, because I left Noah in the center he's at now with the other company because he does great there. Noah's actually only going to be an ABA for, they only think like 18 more months, like insurance is kind of like not wanting to pay for it for much longer because he's doing a lot better. Like he's doing really, really well. He's getting older. We're kind of working on what he's going to do because he's going to be 16 soon. So it's like, what is he going to do with the rest of his life now? So we just left him there. But the other kids, I had toured an ABA center that was amazing. Like out of all the ABA centers I had looked at, this was like one of the best. I just loved how it's put up. But at the end of the day, I just don't feel comfortable putting Liam in an ABA center. There just wasn't a lot of cameras, like hardly any cameras. As much as I want it for him, I would feel more comfortable putting him in school before I would feel comfortable doing something like that. I don't know. There was just a pit in my stomach. My son not being able to talk to me. He's not able to use his AAC device in a way that he's able to communicate with me. I feel like when there's not cameras, there's not accountability. Like at least the schools here for the most part have cameras in different areas. Um, like if you guys remember Lex having that incident where he like fell and hurt himself, they were able to pull footage and see exactly what happened. So I feel like the lack of accountability is like where I'm at with it. I am using the rest of summer to kind of figure out which way I want to go. Liam is school age to start kindergarten this year. So I have to decide if that is the route I want to take or if I want to just keep them home or if I want to try maybe home ABA through a different company. Choosing ABA companies is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. And I did a lot a lot of research before we moved here and I chose the ABA company that we have now. I don't know, but that's basically what, what happened. Lack of supervision, Liam broke his elbow. His cast is off now, he's doing good. It was really upsetting because he couldn't tell us what happened, what exactly hurt. We were like doing this guessing game, which is you. if you have any nonverbal children, you know what I'm talking about. Like when you're like, well, if we touch here, they don't, cry but if we touch here they cry a little bit if we touch here they cry more he kept telling them it was the either the arm or the elbow but because they didn't know they started out with x-raying his wrist we're gonna figure it out i don't think that there's a right or wrong answer and i do feel like aba has helped my kids a lot specifically noah and lex uh, we've seen such an improvement but there was also a lot of micromanaging that has to be done things that i saw in the home that I always said, this is why I don't want them in center. Because if this would have been in center, like they would have continued with this program that I don't agree with and I don't agree how it was executed. We are our big, our kids' biggest advocates. If your kid goes to an ABA center, I'm not judging you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad at all. Being autistic myself, like I think about like how I would feel and that is what keeps me from putting them in a center. How frustrating it has to be for Liam to not be able to talk to us. What if something was happening and he wasn't being able to talk to us? Like that just literally breaks my heart. And at the end of the day, I would homeschool him before going through something like that. That is what happened. Oh. I forgot to tell you guys that our landing crew Facebook page is back up. So it's facebook.com forward slash our landing crew. If you do want to follow us there, I hope everyone has themselves a great week. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see ya and leave the rest behind.